my beautiful butterflies welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Beverly and it is lovely to see you today in this video we're going to be talking about anxiety <laughs> So anxiety is something that a lot of people deal with, um, especially in our society, it's very fast paced, everything's about exams and reaching achievements and having five year goals and knowing what you want to be when you're 60, when you're 14. It's very pressure orientated and I have dealt with anxiety mainly because of school. But through my whole life um, I was always being sick before school I worried so much about everything from getting lost to going to the classroom that I needed to go to to walking in late not knowing the right thing to say to someone I would rehearse things over and over and over in my mind I was too scared to even walk like four houses along from where I grew up to where the ice cream van used to stop <laughs> I wouldn't walk that distance I just wouldn't go there on my own to queue up even though my mum would say well I'll just stand in the doorway and watch you nothing's gonna happen I was terrified and the amount of times I went without an ice cream because I was too scared to make those steps it really shows me looking back that I've just always dealt with anxiety now there are a lot of hidden little parts of anxiety that we don't really talk about and this was inspired by an image that I saw on Instagram and I think I shared it on Instagram as well but um, it was an image that really showed me there's a lot of little nuances to anxiety that sometimes we might think to ourselves everybody feels that way but in actual fact they don't so I just wanted to highlight some of those things so the first one is feeling unable to speak up the amount of times at school I was called stupid or teachers would look down at me for not participating in class enough because I was terrified to put my hand up and answer the question. I was terrified of, do you remember like being in English class and they'd have a book that you'd all be reading and everyone would have to like read a paragraph or two paragraphs and they go around the whole class. I would spend the whole time just literally sat there gripped in fear unable to follow what people were saying because I'd know that my okay this five students until I've got to read four three like I was just terrified of that whole thing feeling unable to speak up in class or in a board meeting things like that it can really make you look bad or feel bad it can make you feel stupid or look stupid to other people but in reality it's just a part of anxiety it's a mental health issue it's not something you can really control um, coming into this as well is um, those times that you rehearse over and over again in your head what you're going to say before you get there I do this a lot say if I've got to ask for something in a shop um, I would the whole queue be going over and over in my head what I had to say when I got to the counter terrifying another thing that I really dealt with a lot and still do is assuming people can read my thoughts or know what I'm thinking so I would be say rehearsing those words that I'm going to say to the shopkeeper and I look up and somebody's looking at me and I would think they know exactly what I'm doing right now they know that I'm rehearsing exactly what I've got to say and they think I'm stupid. The amount of times I've thought that has been insane. And again, it's it's just a part of the mental health spectrum. It's just part of being an anxious person and dealing with anxiety. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And no, people can't read your minds unless they're psychic. Unless they're a very good psychic. Not many psychics can actually read minds, but maybe them Darren Brown he definitely can <laughs> so I just spoke about feeling stupid and that is a big part of it not getting involved in things not playing sports even though you want to not getting involved in group activities because you're you're frightened of not being accepted 
or um, that you're not perfect enough to be judged worthy or being seen as stupid. These are all parts of anxiety that are not often talked about but it's a big part of why you'll have kids who are quite happy to be in a group situation and kids who are petrified of it. I was always petrified of it. I was lucky because at school I had my group, little group of friends and so we'd always be in that group but if I was in a class without those people and we had to do group work I was always like the straggler that the teacher would say oh just work with these and shove you in a group because I just didn't know how to cope and I always felt like they would either think I was stupid or I wasn't good enough to be with them. Apologising all the time is a big one especially in the chronic illness community I've spoken about it before on my blog if you don't follow my blog link is down below but um I've spoken about this a lot just the fact that we will apologize for things that we shouldn't be apologizing for like I will add ask my husband to help me with something because I can't get up because I'm not well enough because I can't do something and it's not my fault so why am I why do I always feel the need to say I'm so sorry I'm really sorry I'm sorry thank you I'm sorry 50 million times it drives him mad it drives me mad but I can't help it I just feel like I have to apologize and a lot of people I found in the chronic illness community will look at me and be like oh, I know exactly what you're talking about yes that is me too so that makes me feel a little bit better but that's definitely part of anxiety that comes along with having chronic illnesses but a lot of people with anxiety who have no physical illnesses they also deal with that and so the I think if we spoke about things like that a lot more people would realize that they don't actually have any reason to apologize it's just they feel bad because of anxiety now I do this last thing a lot and that's avoiding eye contact I will do this a lot with um, when I'm one-on-one -on -one talking and you might notice it when I'm talking on camera to you guys even though I love connecting with you and talking to you looking into the lens of a camera is really scary and it kind of makes me feel a little bit unhinged especially as right next to where I'm supposed to be looking is a little image of me hello hello me a little image of me talking to myself it's just oh I try my best to look you in the eyes but I'm sorry that I probably fail most of the time and I've just done most of the things we've just been talking about <laughs> but especially on one-on-one -on -one conversations I will avoid looking at that person um, and people have used to tell me off for it a lot so then I made too much eye contact so I was like I'd just be staring that person in the eye which also makes that person feel really awkward it's hard to juggle and hard to find the right amount of looking into someone's eye but doesn't make you feel uncomfortable and doesn't make them feel uncomfortable and to be honest I just can't figure it out so I just avoid it all works for me now I have found as I've gotten older I have learned a few things that have helped a few little nuggets that have gotten me through day-to-day -day living with anxiety especially I mean I'm lucky in a way I'm disabled and I don't leave the house very often but when we go out for a day out or when we go to the shops my anxiety can flare up really badly so here's a few little little nuggets that I've come up with so the first one you will hear me talking about a lot especially if you follow my blog blooming mindfulness and that's mindfulness so the first time I heard of mindfulness was when I went to therapy it must have been about 10 years ago now um, and they were talking about how being in the moment is really important if you stay in the moment then you can kind of realize you're say I'm safe right now like your thoughts can be thinking about somebody got attacked by a machete the other day <laughs> I saw it on the news that could happen to me and then my mind will start spiraling at all these ideas but if you then think okay hold on a minute in this very moment there's nobody standing around who looks dangerous there's nobody around me even sometimes 
and I will be sat there with my husband and I can think right now in this moment my husband's next to me and I know that he would do anything to keep me safe. I know that in this moment I'm safe and just bringing your mind and your thoughts away from those spiraling ideas and bringing them back to the here and now really stop me getting lost in those spiraling spiraling dark thoughts that can start to really affect you sometimes even to the point where in the past I've had to leave somewhere early even if I've been really enjoying it just because of my anxiety it's just awful I think it's important to remember that being in this moment um, mindfulness is something that therapists have kind of taken on and run off with but it's something that people have been doing for thousands of years it's a meditation point it's a way of anchoring yourself in it's a way of being in the moment Buddhists practice this because they don't believe in getting lost in your thoughts and so it's kind of been taken over by the mental health community but I can see why because it works so definitely if you are interested in learning more Google it or check out my blog. The next thing is breath work. Now, anxiety is something that can very quickly spiral into a panic attack and a full on panic attack is terrifying. I've only had a couple of full on big panic attacks. My panic attacks thankfully can be quite small, but it's still scary. Bringing it back to your breath is it's a form of mindfulness, it's a form of meditation, but if we just bring it back to, say for example, square breathing, which is breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. See, it makes a square. And if you just think of that, if you're taking your time to just think, it's that simple. Or you could even do um, breathe in for a certain count, hold for a moment, and then let your breath out slower than you're taking it in. And that will naturally lessen the amount of craziness going on in your head. But basically, any kind of breath work that you find works for you is great because it will again take those thoughts and redirect them to something that's actually going to help rather than something that's going to leave you lost in a cloud of spiraling madness that's the only way I can describe anxiety I don't really have a better way of describing it to me that's it just feels like being out of control completely and breath work really helps me the last thing is avoiding subjects on TV and films that trigger your panic attacks and your anxiety attacks. This has made it so that I can't watch some films, like films that involve sexual abuse, um, any kind of films that involve dogs being lost and trying to find their way home again, anything where an animal gets injured, um, the news is a big one I just cannot watch I have tried being you know one of these people who knows what's going on in the world but if you've ever even watched the news you will see nothing but badness horribleness wars famines you name it and it's all going on in our world now Yes, it's important to know what's happening in the world, but it's also important to realise that they're just giving you a one-sided view of the world. News is only ever going to tell you the bad things, because bad news unfortunately sells better than good news. That's just a fact, it's something to do with the way humans are wired. We love drama, we love bad news, I don't know what it is, I don't understand it myself, because I love a, a bit of good news. Um, I will say that my friend um, Miss Mary Lou, I shout her out a lot on my channel, but she has a podcast and they share like good news of the week. I love that. I wish more people did that, more news did that, like for every bad they did a good. I don't know, balance it out a bit more. When I realise they're only ever going to tell you the bad things that are going on in this world, 
I realised that, you know what, there's a lot of good people out there, there's a lot of good things happening and I don't need to just know the bad, I need to know a bit of everything. And so I started finding alternative places to find news out and I've been a lot better off since then. I really, really hope that these tips and tricks and these things that I've been talking about have helped you to understand your mental health a little bit better. Maybe some of these things you just thought everybody dealt with and now you realise, no, actually, that was anxiety and I need to do something about this. If you have any more tips and tricks or any more things that you think would help my viewers, definitely leave them in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why not hit that little subscribe button, ring that little bell, so you always know when I upload. I'm usually here Mondays and Fridays, health permitting. It's been lovely to spend this time with you today. I hope you have a wonderful week coming up. I hope you're having a lovely day, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>